This video was sponsored by Honey. That's 200 right there. It broke our board. Wondering why I'm in a smelly weight room breaking things? Yeah, it's a long story. Let me fill you in. All right, guys, I am so excited about this one because we're actually gonna do some scientific experiments and answer some questions related to woodworking, and that is which joint is the strongest? Now, I will preface this with saying that after doing this experiment, I did think of quite a few variables that I did not take into consideration, so this might be step one in this grand joint experiment. We might have to change some things, adapt some things, and do this whole process over again. But this is a great place to start, and I will explain those variables a little bit more at the end of the video. But for now, let's build some joints, let's start trying to break them, and let's see at what weight each joint breaks. So in order to do that, roll the joint footage. Now for consistency, all of our joints were made out of the exact same material, white oak. We're gonna start with a simple butt joint. This is literally just two pieces of wood butted up against each other and glued together. I just took on this little squaring clamp and some other clamps, and that's it. Our next joint is dowel pins. This starts out exactly the same as the butt joint, but we're gonna drill some holes in the end and, you guessed it, insert some dowels. Well, first we have to make some dowels. I did this with a simple homemade dowel plate. I do have a video on how you can do this yourself. You can click up in the upper right hand corner of the screen. After I made my dowels, I cut them down to size and I smeared some glue on them and inserted them into my pre-drilled holes. And I tapped them with a hammer. Once the glue was all dry and cured, I took a flush cut saw and I trimmed off the excess dowel chunks. Just like that. Zip, zap, zoop. And then of course I sanded everything down. Because even though this is just a test, they need to look pretty. And it looked something like that. After the dowel pins, I made a box joint. And for this, I'm using my homemade box joint jig. And yes, I have a video showing you how to make this exact jig. It's super easy and you can definitely do it on your table saw at home. You basically just run all your pieces through the jig cutting your box joints, making sure that they match up and are spaced evenly by throwing them over that little notch there. Once you get all your pieces cut, you just smear some glue in between each one of your box joints using your patented glue spreader. And then using a rubber mallet, you just bang all the fingers together and make sure they're nice and tight. I normally don't even put clamps on this one because if it's a tight fit, you just don't need them. After the glue dries, I sand the whole thing down because, as I mentioned, it needs to look pretty. And it does. I've always had a soft spot for box joints. After the box joints, I'm going to do miter joints two different ways to see, well, I know which one's going to be stronger, but to see how much weight each one will hold. So I cut a 45 on the end of some pieces of wood. Now for my first piece, I'm just going to do a simple miter joint. That means just glue and nothing else. The second one, I'm gonna do a miter with splines. So the first thing I needed to do was glue up both of my pieces. So I plopped them in some squaring clamps, threw on some calls to make clamping a little bit easier, and I tightened those clamps until I had good squeeze out all around my joint. Ooh. Then I needed to cut slots for splines in one of the miter joints, so I threw together this quick spline cutting slot jig thing. It's really just some scraps of plywood that allows me to cut a 45 degree angle vertical to the blade. I cut three evenly spaced slots and they looked something like this. Then all you gotta do is fill them with a little wood and a little glue. I decided to go with black walnut because traditionally when you put splines in something, you use a contrasting wood. So let's keep things traditional and very messy apparently. 
After inserting my black walnut splines into the miter joint, I waited for the glue to dry, and then I cut everything flush with a Japanese pole saw. First on one side, then I flipped the whole thing over, and yeah, did the exact same thing over on the other side. And then because everything's gotta look good, I once again sanded it all smooth. Just to break it. Seems pointless, but dang, that does look pretty sexy. After splines, the next appropriate progression seemed like pocket holes. And I'm not just gonna do pocket holes one way, I'm gonna do them two ways. So I cut my pocket holes on both sides of two different pieces, and I'm gonna do one joint with the pocket holes on the outside like this, and I'm gonna do the other joint with the pocket holes on the inside. I can tell you right now, the inside pocket holes will definitely be weaker, but I'm curious to know at what weight they'll break. So I smeared some glue in my joints, I applied some clamps, and I screwed some pocket screws into my pocket holes. On the inside, on the outside, feeling like way less of a woodworker than I did when I was cutting splines. But there you have it, pocket hole joints two different ways. Remember this is for science people. Then I wanted to do some joints with some non-traditional joinery. So I decided to do the domino joiner with these little dominoes in there and then a new one to me, the lamello joiner, cutter, I don't know what you call this, but it inserts this crazy plastic clip into the joint. I don't think these are meant for strength, but science. Let's see what happens. First I mortised out my dominoes, and then I used this crazy thing to cut a half circle, I guess. See, the half circles are cut, and then the lamello has a male and female part to the clip. You insert the female on one side, you insert the male on the other side. I'm sure you learned all this in middle school, but I guess I'll keep showing you. And then the male clips into the female. You can't tell, but I'm blushing right now. Anyways, before I did that, we needed some lube. Oh jeez, I meant glue. Put some glue in the joint and clip clip the whole thing together. It's actually kind of nice because the clip acts as a clamp, so you don't need a clamp on the joint. And from what I understand, it gives about 40 pounds of clamping pressure. Next, I smeared some glue on my dominoes and inserted those the way that you've seen me do a million times. And I clamped the whole thing together. And there you have it, a lamello joint and a domino joint. Then I labeled the domino with a D because I couldn't tell which was which at this point, and the lamello with an L, so that I could distinguish and tell them apart. The last joint I wanted to do was hand cut dovetails. So I got my best dovetail saw and I started to... Wait a second. I don't hand cut dovetails. I didn't want to try and hand cut dovetails because I thought they'd be pretty crappy and not a very scientific experiment because who's to say my joint just wasn't horrible. So I outsourced my dovetails to a good friend, Eric Curtis, and he did a fabulous job. Beautiful. So let's recap. We got our miter joint, our miter joint with splines, our box joint, our dowel pin joint, our hand cut dovetail joint, our lamello joint, our domino joint, our pocket holes on the inside, our pocket holes on the outside, and just a simple butt joint. <laughs> but all right so obviously to test these joints i had to come up with some sort of system that we could stack weight on top of the joint and only stress the actual joint and see at what point it breaks so this is the system i came up with now at first i didn't know if this was going to work basically i have this large platform that we're going to stack weight on top of this is attached to a brace piece back here with a hinge that's where I was concerned. I thought maybe the hinge would give this some sort of support and it would mess up our readings because some of the weight would be supported in the back. But what we've done here is we basically balanced this whole piece so that all the weight is just being supported by here. The hinge can fold down, so really 
if this is gonna go down, that hinge is just gonna fold with it. It's not getting supported at all on the back. And if you don't believe me, we did a little test. Basically, we took this postage scale, stuck it under here with a brace piece, so this is the exact same height as in the back, and we zeroed this out, so it's not accounting for any of the weight of the brace piece. We folded this down, zeroed it out actually after we folded this down, because we do have to subtract about four and a half pounds for this piece sitting on top. After we zeroed all that out, so we had a negative reading down here, we set a 25 pound weight on the top, and it's reading exactly at 25.02 ounces. So you can see this is a pretty darn accurate way to measure the weight that's coming down on the top. Now, I built this little contraption. This will sit under here, and what this does basically, it locks our piece in this little 45 degree stand here, and so this is gonna be resting on the top. Now, if you know anything about physics, which I don't know much, but I think by pushing down on the top here, it's gonna transfer all that weight to the weakest point, which is gonna be that joint. So the more weight we stack on top here, eventually we should reach a breaking point that will snap our joint, or the wood is just gonna break, which tells us that the joint is stronger than the actual wood. Who knows what's gonna happen, but I'm excited to start testing these. The problem is, we need a place that has a lot of weight that we can stack on top. And for that, we're gonna to have to make a little field trip. Oh, hey everybody. This video is sponsored by Honey. No, not the Honey you're thinking about. Honey is the number one shopping tool in America and your online sidekick. You're probably like, what the heck does that mean? Well, have you ever been shopping online and you get to the checkout page and there's that little box that says coupon code and you're like, I'd like a coupon code but where does one get a coupon code? Well, that's where Honey comes in. You basically download Honey on your computer and then when you're shopping online, it automatically tries to find you coupon codes for whatever you might be shopping for. There's literally no reason you wouldn't want to use Honey unless you didn't want to save money. But if you didn't want to save money, you're just weird. Anyways, let me show you how it works. You're on your computer doing a little online shopping, you check Honey, boom, coupon codes, and save money. Really, it's that easy. Check Honey, add coupon codes, save some money. If you already got it on your computer, well, add it to your iPhone too. Whether you're at home or on the go, Honey can try saving you money on tons of different websites. I mean, who doesn't like to save money? It gives you a little jolt, a little pick-me-up, makes you feel good. So, here's what you're gonna wanna do. Go to joinhoney.com slash bourbonmoth. Put it on your computer, put it on your iPhone. It's available on both. It's really that easy. There's no reason not to do it. It's completely free and you'll start getting coupon codes and saving money. I wish I could say more than that, but it's really that simple. Joinhoney.com slash bourbon moth, computer, iPhone, whatever. Use it, save money. That's it. So with our 10 common joints constructed, ready to go, it was time to head to our secret testing location. Now before we go over there and I show you that footage, I'm gonna list all of our 10 joints here, magically on screen. Now these are in no particular order, but what I want you to do is pause the video for a second, take a look at these joints, and put them in the order of weakness in your mind. Which joint do you think is gonna be the weakest and which joint do you think is gonna be the strongest? And let me tell you right now, having already done this experiment, I think you're gonna be a little shocked by the results. All right, let's go to our secret testing location and let's start breaking some joints. Hey, we are on location. South Albany High School weight room, home of the Red Hawks. Anyways, we've brought our joint testing contraption here because there's a lot of weight that we can stack on top of this. So we're gonna systematically go through each one of our selected joints. We're gonna test the weight, and more importantly, we're gonna see at which weight each one of those breaks or is compromised. And hopefully, this will help answer the question, which is the strongest joint, and what joints can you get away with using in different applications? So without any further ado, let's break some joints. Now the first joint that we did was just the butt joint. Now we know a butt joint is just two pieces of wood, one butted up against the other and held together with glue. That's all there is. So it's no surprise that this was the weakest joint for multiple reasons. Number one, there's no tenon or anything holding it together, but number two, you're gluing end grain to long grain. 
and we know that gluing any end grain to anything just isn't a strong joint because end grain is full of all these little pores. So as you apply glue to that end grain, well the glue likes to migrate away from your joint into those pores so you wind up with less glue holding that joint together. So it makes sense that the butt joint would be the first to break. But that being said, it broke at 60 pounds, which honestly was a surprise to me because I thought it would break maybe at 10, 20 pounds. You just think that would be a really weak joint. And you have to ask yourself, is 60 pounds really that small of an amount? If you're building a drawer box with four butt joints put together, do you need more than 60 pounds of pressure and strength in any one corner? Probably not. But as woodworkers, we like to over-engineer things and make them more complicated than they need to be. So let's move on to the next breakable joint. Now our second joint to break at a weight of just 60 to 70 pounds was the lamello. Now this isn't that surprising to me because the lamello was never designed for strength. It's really designed for alignment and ease of clamping. It's basically just a little clamp that you can put in a joint so that you don't have to put exterior clamps or that you can use to help yourself line things up. So at the end of the day, with the lamello in there, it's really just a butt joint with a piece of plastic. So the fact that it only added 10 more pounds of potential strength to the joint, well, that's just really not a surprise because you shouldn't be using lamellos to add strength to any joint. You can use them to line things up, but we've learned you don't wanna use them for strength. Our third joint to break was the domino joint. Now, initially this one surprised me until I really thought about how a domino joint is constructed. It really is just a butt joint. I thought the dominoes might add some increased strength, which to be honest, it did. It increased it to breaking at 90 to 100 pounds, which is, I mean, that's a strong joint for a single joint. The reason I don't think it increased it more is because we're dealing with three quarter inch material, which means that those little dominoes have to be small enough to fit first inside that three quarter inch material. And then unless we're doing through dominoes, which would probably increase the strength even more, we can only take those dominoes about five eighths of an inch into our three quarter inch piece. So it doesn't really increase the glue surface that much. So at the end of the day, it's really just a butt joint with a few little pieces of wood shoved in the end. But that being said, it did increase our breakage weight to 90 to 100 pounds. So if you got a domino joiner, that does make a pretty strong joint. 100 pounds on a joint, I'm happy with that. Now after our third breakage, this is where things started to get a little crazy because now things were starting to even out and we actually had a three-way tie for our fourth joint to break. The first one I'll talk about is the pocket holes. I honestly didn't expect this one to make it this far. This is the pocket hole joint with the pocket holes on the inside, which I did expect to be weaker than the pocket holes on the outside. This gave us a weight at about 100 to 110 pounds. For pocket holes and glue, that's not bad, but that's with the pocket holes on the inside. We'll talk about the pocket holes on the outside when we get to that one. The second joint that was tied was the through dowel pins. Now, this one did surprise me. I thought for sure this would sail up towards the top, but it didn't. Now, we just talked about the domino joint, which broke at 90 to 100 pounds, and I said maybe if we would have done through dominoes, that would have increased it anymore. Well, it turns out that dowel pins, they're essentially just through dominoes. It did increase it, but only by about 10 to 20 pounds of breakage strength. So. This is still a pretty strong joint, 100 to 110 pounds, but it wasn't the strongest. Now the next one absolutely surprised me, and that was the dovetail joint. It tied for 100 to 110 pounds of breaking pressure. Now I already said, I didn't make this joint. I was worried that if I made it, it wouldn't be accurate because it wouldn't be a perfect joint. So I outsourced it to somebody who is an expert at cutting dovetails, and that's my friend Eric Curtis and he cut a beautiful dovetail joint. It was perfectly tight. It looked absolutely on par with what a dovetail joint should look like, but it still broke at 100 to 110 pounds of breaking pressure, which I can't really explain. I'm not sure why that happened. Maybe it's because you have your thin pins and they're popping through these thicker tails. I don't really know, but the fact of the matter is it broke at 100 to 110 pounds of pressure. I would say maybe he used a different glue, 
but he didn't. I made sure he used the exact same tight bond two that I used. It's the exact same white oak, three quarters of an inch, same length. So as far as I can tell, the breaking strength on a dovetail joint made out of white oak is 100 to 110 pounds of pressure. Sometimes life just surprises you. Now the next joint to break was the pocket holes on the outside. It broke at between 160 to 170 pounds. And this one really wasn't that much of a surprise. I knew that the pocket holes on the outside was gonna be much stronger than the pocket holes on the inside. And that's simply because the directions of the screws. The screws are angled in towards the meaty part of the joint. Where if they're on the inside, they're actually going out towards that thin end grain. So it just makes sense that the inside pocket holes would snap much sooner than the outside ones. What I did not expect was for the pocket holes to outlast the dovetail joint. But I'll stop dwelling about the dovetail joint. This one broke at between 160 to 170 pounds, which shows that pocket holes and glue makes a pretty strong joint. I gotta level with you. This was the biggest surprise for me out of this entire experiment, that a simple miter joint would come in third place. A simple miter joint, in my mind, is not much different than a butt joint. You have two pieces of wood with glue and you stick them together. But it's crazy how cutting that simple 45 degree angle and eliminating some of that end grain increased our strength from a break weight of 60 pounds to 200 to 210 pounds for a single joint. When you think about it, you could create a joint like this with a seat on top and make a chair. And if you weigh under 200 pounds, that potentially would support your weight which I think all of us think is crazy. We would never, ever do that. It seems incredibly weak. But the glue, the science, the tests, they don't lie. A simple miter joint is third place at 200 to 210 pounds. Fascinating. Our second place winner is the box joint. Now this doesn't surprise me. I actually picked the box joint as the second place winner before we did the test. What does surprise me is that the box joint only broke at 10 pounds more than the simple miter joint, between 210 and 220 pounds of break weight. Now, the reason this is such a strong joint is because you're not really dealing with that much end grain. Basically, only one third of the joint is end grain to long grain. The rest of it is long grain to long grain. There's a lot of glue surface, so that makes sense that this would be a really strong joint. What doesn't make sense is that this box joint was so much stronger than the dovetail joint, which is essentially the same thing. But the box joint came in second place at between 210 and 220 pounds. That's a pretty darn strong joint. And now time for the grand winner in our joint test experiment, the miter with splines. I would not have picked this as my first choice, but with the data we've collected already, it makes sense. If just the miter was so strong between 200 and 210 pounds of breaking pressure, then adding the splines would have to increase that. What I didn't expect was that it would increase it so much. Simply by adding those splines, we got another 60 to 70 pounds of strength in that joint. This one came in at a whopping 260 to 270 pounds of breaking pressure, which is insane for a single joint. That's heavier than most grown men standing on that joint and it would not budge. So after doing all of this research and tests, it really makes you rethink the strength of a simple miter joint. We spend so much time trying to do fancy joints, and I understand a lot of that is for aesthetics. We want the joint to look pretty. But if you want a quick joint that's incredibly strong, you might want to think about just cutting two boards at a 45 degree angle and gluing them together. It makes an incredibly strong joint. And the crazy part is, it was one of the easiest joints to put together. So for the strength, and the ease in which you can hook two boards together, I think the clear winner here is not the miter with splines, but just the simple miter. It broke our board. God dang it. 210.
That was crazy. I got to tell you, I'm so surprised at the results of that test. I had in my brain coming into this that it would either be the box joint or the dovetails, hands down, that would be the strongest joint. And the thing that blew them out of the water was a simple miter joint. And the fact that adding splines to a miter joint only increases your weight capabilities by about 15 pounds, if that, that's nuts. My next goal is to redo this test, maybe with a different type of wood. Ultimately, I want to find a joint that's so strong that the wood itself breaks before the joint does. That is my new mission. So stick around. I'll probably do another one of these videos again at some point in the future. For now, I'm not even going to clean this up. That's what high school kids are for, right?